All right, here we go again. This time I want to show you just briefly, uh, as briefly as possible, some of the theme customization capabilities that are built into the mantra theme. And if you're not using the mantra theme, uh, the, probably very little of this is going to be really applicable. Your theme is likely to have some similar capabilities. The mantra theme is very, very uh, customizable. Um, again, one of the things that we love about the mantra theme is the fact that it has a uh, presentation page, which is a home page, and is different than the remainder of the site. So this allows you to create kind of a splash page or a front page that uh, communicates a lot of information before you get people into the into the site itself. This is what uh, we're really going to focus most of our time on, how to customize this page. Um, as opposed to some of the other details that we could get into. So in order to uh, customize this page, we're going to go to the dashboard and then we're going to go down to appearance. And the appearance menu has a bunch of th things on it. The themes page allows you to install or activate other themes that uh, uh, if you're interested, you may want to browse themes because you may find something that you like better that you want to use. Uh, there's, there are many, many fantastic themes out there for WordPress. Um, we recommend that you get your themes from WordPress.org uh, unless you're, uh, you become a real pro because it is possible to and get themes that, are, that have pretty high ratings. Look for, for lots of stars because um, it is possible for uh, nefarious people to set up themes that um, are, are will allow your website to be hacked and so you want to choose uh, themes from reputable sources with good reviews and so we represent that you or we recommend that go ahead and have a look at those install any that you'd like it's very very simple to do um, and uh, you might find something that you like a lot better than mantra but mantra has a lot of capability we already looked at widgets in the last menu, uh, or last uh, de uh, demo. We looked at menus in, in the tutorial previous to that. And uh, in this one, we'll be looking at the mantra settings primarily. You can also look at uh, or uh, customize your header and backgrounds as well. And so let's just take a look at those. We'll look at mantra settings in particular. Mantra settings, there are many, many, OK? And so you're going to see those here. Layout settings, presentation page, text settings, color settings, graphic settings, post information settings. And I encourage you to kind of wander through these and play with them. Uh, at any point, if you get to the point where you're, you uh, can't, uh, you f you've, you've messed things up and lost yourself, uh, you can click reset to defaults and it will reset everything back to defaults and you can start again. So that's a, a nice bailout. Um, none of your posts will be deleted or pages or menus or anything like that. You'll just be resetting all of these settings uh, back. And so just to give you a feel for some of the things you can do, uh, um, you, you can choose a layout which can be any one of these, one column, two column, with the sidebar on the right, sidebar on the left, sidebars on the right and left. <laughs> I mean, you name it. You can set up your uh, sidebar width as a percentage of, of the overall width, your header image height, which is where is the banner area up there at the top, and so on. So lots of inform lots of things you can do in here. Um, under uh, text settings, this is your typography, fonts, font sizes, etc. Color settings, um, all of the colors, background colors, text colors, link colors, hover colors, etc. So you can completely change the color scheme of your site. I recommend that you that you think about this a little. I mean, you can just play with it. Doesn't hurt to play with it, but um, it's good to take a little bit of time and kind of think about what is my, what do I want the color scheme of my site to be? Select a set of colors and then reuse those over and over again appropriately um, in the site. You'll see as I'm just going to open that. You'll see that that goes on for some time. There are lots and lots of colors that you can customize for your website. So um, uh, this gives you the opportunity to select a color theme that really suits your purposes. Maybe uh, black, uh, gray, and white, uh, as in this mantra theme, maybe just a little bit too dark for you. And so you have the opportunity to lighten that up and, and make it look more 
like what you like. Um, in fact, let me just quickly show you uh, the MP0 Studios website, which is our website. Um, you'll notice that uh, that our theme is uh, is much lighter color. This is still the mantra theme, uh, but as you can see, it's much lighter. I'm going to drag this out a little bit so you can see the background. But there is a background on either side. I just have my window set and narrow, and uh, for that reason, it's not showing up. Okay? But you can custom, and this shows, uh, you know, customization of the colors and logo areas and things like that with Mantra. Um, <coughs> Your graphic settings, things like the caption pin and the way the image border works. Uh, you may have seen, recall from the last tutorial, we created a uh, blog post that had an image in it, and that's what that looks like. Right there with a pin, stick pin in it. And that's set by these settings right here, the, ba the uh, border color and then how you want that caption pin, if you want to have a caption pin and what you want it to look like. And then same with menu bullets and so on. So there are many, many, uh, we're not going to go through all the details of those because it just makes the uh, tutorial too long, but you can wander through those and see what's going on. Now I did want to focus a little bit on the presentation page right here. Uh, you can see we want to enable the presentation page. If you were to reset to defaults, so this would be disabled, and the presentation page wouldn't show up at, at you know as the home page of your website. So you want to make sure this is enabled in order to show the page. And then we're going to change. I'm going to actually change the dimensions of my um, of my input image to 800 by 300 pixels. Okay, because the, a slider I'm going to upload here in a moment is 800 by 300. Gives just a little taller one. The animation is random uh, of all of these. So I have all of these different animation transitions. These are really transitions from one slide to the next. We have it set to random, so it just uses those randomly. That's the default. We can change the border color and the border width, the time uh, for the transition to take place. This is three quarters of a second. 750 milliseconds is three quarters of a second. The pause time, this is the time between transitions uh, that, the, that the image is static. And then slider navigation, which are bullets. And these are, are what appears, I'm going to go back to the website here, uh, down here at the bottom. So uh, these are the bullets. If I click on one, I immediately go to the uh, back and forth between them. And so I could have up to five of those, of course. So. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to upload or choose a slide um, from here. And uh, before we did this before with uh, 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 something that we uploaded, you could just drop a file in here. Uh, but we can select from our media library. And I'm going to I'm going to select this one right here. Uh, and it's 800 by 302. We're going to click full size and use this image. And uh, note that whatever I put into the title or the text area actually shows up over the top. So if we look at this, um, you've got a title and a text area here that actually show up on top of your slider. So uh, we're going to leave those empty for this one. And um, we're going to leave the others alone. now. You can have up to five sliders. Uh, uh, any that you don't want to use, just uh, just clear, delete all of the text in the boxes, and those won't show up in your slider. So let's uh, save the changes and go back here. Okay, I'm going to refresh. Okay, there we go. So we refresh that uh, page, and now our new slider shows up. And you can see we're going back and forth between the two. Now, because that second slider is a different size, it's actually resizing. Um, see that? But that's OK. All right. Now, another thing I might want to uh, customize on this page, and I'm going to go through them in the order they appear on the, on the, uh, the mantra settings, are these columns down here. I have up to four columns. I can have none or all four 
appear down here. Each one can have its own header image. The header image can be a link that takes me uh, to another page in my website or somebody else's website. And I can have uh, a heading and text down here along with a read more link that again could take me to another page. So uh, this allows you to provide summary information to different parts of your website right on your front page which uh, which is fantastic. It makes it a great jump page. And that information is also under the presentation page. And if you go down below the sliders, down to the presentation page columns, specify the number of columns here. Okay, and we'll say there's just two. We can specify the height of the image. The width is going to change based on the width of the um, display area uh, or the browser frame as well as the number of columns being specified. What do you want to appear in the read more text if there's a link? And then you can put your, uh, choose an image, choose title and text, etc. right here, as well as a link. And this is the link then that would go to the, um, uh, you know, that the read more link would go to or the image would take you to if you clicked on it. So that's your text area down here. Finally, there are a couple of other text areas. There's a, a potential title in this area, another title here, and um, two text areas, one of which you can see here and the other which is em empty just below it. And these all appear in your settings under Extras. If you click Extra Text, then you can include titles here. I'm going to actually eliminate these because we don't use them. All right. Uh, I can set the title color if I want. In fact, I'm going to go ahead. We'll, we'll put something here. We'll say um, uh, column area. And then bottom text one. And I'll go ahead and put something in here. Bottom text two. So you can see where that shows up. And then um, we'll save the changes. Remember, we reduced the number of columns. And so you'll see that as well. So we can completely customize the content of this of this front page to suit our needs, and um, uh, you'll notice how the images got wider. So I need to plan for that um, when I'm creating those images. And then uh, here's the here's the additional text area you couldn't see before. We eliminated the top title. We changed this title. And so um, here's a couple things to think about. You want to make sure that when you create, use GIMP or uh, Photoshop or your favorite uh, uh, photo editing tool, and create these images exactly the right size. So if you've set your your uh, slider area to 800 by 300 pixels, create your images at exactly 800 by 300 pixels. That keeps it from resizing them and and uh, potentially messing them up, having them look silly. So uh, be sure to do that. These are a little bit harder because of the fact that the width of these can change um, as I move or as I drag my uh, uh, as I drag my or as I narrow my viewport area. Uh, and, and for smartphones and tablets, it's going to be different yet. Because of that, I need to kind of plan these images in a way that that with a fixed height as they are as they are stretched they continue to look good and that can be a bit of a challenge so you but you need to kind of plan for that a little bit when you're creating these images um, uh, so that they uh, so that it looks uh, it looks reasonable when you're done again anytime uh, you decide that you don't like uh, what you're doing you want to start over with your settings uh, you can simply choose the reset uh, down here at the bottom reset to defaults and everything will be cleared including the uh, uh, slider images that you selected, etc. They'll still be in your media library, but they will no longer be hooked up as sliders or as images for the column headers. Okay, just fine. Well, semi-finally, I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, one is that there are a bunch of uh, these are WordPress uh, settings areas that you may want to go through and uh, change. Take a look at them. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We'll try to help you out. Uh, finally, there are some plugins. We have installed a set of what we think are kind of essential plugins. There are many, many more plugins that you can install into WordPress. Again, it's very easy to find them, to browse them, uh, and, to, uh, and to potentially install them. If you click Add New here, uh, in the 
plugins area you'll see you can search for plugins so let's say I want a a YouTube uh, uh, plugin that will allow me to um, uh, put an embedded player for YouTube in there well there's one that shows up right at the top if I want to install it I can click install now and it's installed automatically and immediately I can activate it and, and uh, begin to work with it so plugins WordPress is a very very powerful platform uh, in terms of allowing third-party developers to add plugins again I encourage you to uh, recommend that you get your plugins from wordpress.org get ones that have good ratings uh, because again it, they can be used as a way to to put Trojan horses into your your uh, website and cause you all kinds of grief we have installed a set of what we consider to be kind of essential plugins that uh, that are right here you may want to look through the um, uh, the settings for these different plugins um, uh, they are plugins that improve the performance of your WordPress site back it up help it with uh, search engine optimization those kinds of things so uh, we've included those but there are many other great plugins there are calendar plugins uh, where you can have a calendar of events that displays on your website uh, either in your sidebars or also in your uh, in your your uh, 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 in a page, there are also uh, uh, plugins for uh, like uh, uh, TubePress, which allows you to actually put an entire uh, YouTube channel, create a gallery uh, that is is based on a YouTube channel or a YouTube playlist that can be displayed in your site so it's a fantastic way for you to promote videos that you have published on YouTube uh, there are also photo galleries uh, that facilitate the creation of uh, photo if you have lots and lots of photos and you want to organize and present on your WordPress website um, there are plugins that, that make that work very well as, as well. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to, to contact us. We can recommend plugins for a variety of different things and uh, ones that we use and we feel confident in, we find pretty, that work pretty well. You'll find a wide degree of variation in quality in terms of these plugins. And so again, look at the uh, reviews and uh, pick those that are, are best rated in, in each category and have the features that you need don't be afraid to experiment enable disable uh, again it's activate and deactivate is actually the words that are used here uh, in order to in order to uh, uh, experiment with different plugins and just see how they work so there's so much more that we could talk about but right now this is we just wanted to get your feet wet get you started and uh, so that you'd at least know what questions to ask and we hope you have a wonderful time customizing your your WordPress website